Hey everybody, Annie Noodle here, and I thought today I would just kind of go over my current favorite art supplies. Um, and I'm not doing an intro because, like, my hair is a giant poofy mess, and I just don't feel like dealing with it. <sighs> so I've kind of broken this down into sections, um, and I thought we'd get the boring stuff out of the way first. These are my two favorite tapes, um, and this one I use exclusively um, in my sketchbooks because I like how narrow it is and you can use it to make little frames around a page or like use it to cut up, a, divide up a page. Awesome tape, it doesn't rip the paper, but it still keeps your paint out from where you don't want it. So this one is an artist tape, so it's an acid-free tape, and it's wider, and it's very sticky, and I can use this to tape down uh, larger pieces of paper to a board when I am painting, or I can use it, because it is acid-free, I can use it when I'm mounting my paintings into a frame. So like when I tape these, tape my paper onto the back of a mat board, I can use this to tape it down and not worry that it's going to yellow my art because nobody wants that. So very awesome tape. Um, I will put links. Um, yeah, links will happen. All right. So speaking of art stuff that's boring. Next up is this. We're going to just back on up a little bit here. So I got this at a garage sale. And uh, it is apparently a paper Merlin panel um, that you use to, you can tape down your piece that you're working on to this while you're working on it. But I just love the shape of it. See how it's long and skinny? Let's give you something to compare that to. So that is my usual art panel that's a square. Um, I know that there's a word for these, it is an art panel, whatever. So this one is long and skinny, and I think I got them at a garage sale, like two for five bucks. And uh, yeah, I felt like like I won. So and I love this one too, but yeah. So this just lets me sit on my couch if I want to sit on my couch in my living room and paint there. I can do that or draw. I draw with this a lot, do little sketching stuff. Uh, yeah, and I just I don't know. I love the shape of it. It's a lot more comfortable when I'm doing smaller pieces than this square one. Yeah. So, I live in an old house. It was built in like the late 1890s. So, my living room doesn't have an overhead light built in. Um, and so I'm constantly battling to like being able to see what I'm doing. So I got this cool light at Dick Blick the other day and I love it. Um, it's really light. It is, where is it? It's USB chargeable, so like it's got a little cord that you just plug into your USB port and it charges. Uh, and it's got three different brightness settings, which I'm sure you're not going to be able to see, but it does have three different brightness settings. Um, yeah, so I love this light. It's really great for when I'm trying to just hang out in my living room and draw with my cats on my lap. Okay. Next... This year, I started drawing with black wing pencils for the first time, and I absolutely love them. Um, I'm never going to get this open. My goodness, that was way too hard. So this is a set that I got from Wet Paint, which is an art supply company in St. Paul, which is close to where I live. I mean, like, two hours away, right? So, close-ish. Uh, so, and they just let me go through and kind of do a grab bag because I wasn't really sure what I wanted. So I got a bunch of different types of black wing. Tanya, you helping? Yes, you are. You're such a helper. Uh, and honestly, most of them I just kind of grabbed based on looks. Um, I think this is like the Kill Bill one and I, I'm a big fan of Kill Bill. So, <sighs> and then there's the wet paint branded official one that you get when you go there and you spend too much money. Anyways, so 
Black wing pencils are so smooth when you write with them. The leads never break. The pencils don't, you know, some pencils when you sharpen them get kind of ratty. Yeah, that just doesn't happen. They're, they're really beautiful. Um, and I'm a huge fan of things that have interesting like versions like I try not to just hoard things for no reason but like having a Kill Bill version and like all of the different ones you can see that like this is one of my favorite ones because I've used it so much already it's starting to get short but yeah having all those little options and all the different um oh what's so hardnesses um because some of them write more smooth and some of them write lighter and yeah Although I don't think there's any of them that write lighter than like an HB. So like it's kind of HB and darker. So yeah, black wing pencils, really cool. Um, wet paint art, really cool. Um, and they do, wet paint has a bunch of, they must have some really good contacts in the art supply industry because I swear every time something new comes out, they get it before everybody else. Like, I don't know if it's the case still, but if you wanted to try Daniel Smith gouache, which I managed to not order, but if you wanted to try it, they were like one of the only places in the country you could order it from for a while. So, yeah. And next we have my little Kakuno um, refillable fountain pens. I just love these so much. I've used them for a couple years now, and this year I got a bunch. I got a couple new ones because I have been just using... The extra fine point and this year I got different ones <laughs> this one is my favorite because it's got that face on it Blah. Tanya you helping is this one your favorite too um, and so this black one has permanent black ink it's carbon um, oh no carbon platinum and then the <laughs> the brown one is actually a waterproof brown too. It's like a plat. It's from the same company. It's a carbon brown. The next thing I want to talk about is these Dur Derwent drawing pencils. I love them so much. Um, I like to use them on top of my watercolor paintings to add like more depth and texture. And for that, they are amazing. They the set that I got. Um, I think has all of the colors in it. Hi, sweetie. Yes. Everybody thinks you're cute. Okay, bye bye <laughs> Um, and it's all these kind of muted, pretty tones. Okay, and so this is all of the pencils in the set that I bought. And as you can see, it's all just very muted tones. This is actually making that blue look way more popping than it really is. It's pretty... Pretty toned down blue. Uh, they're all really pretty. Very lovely, subtle colors that I really like um, to use over my watercolors. Okay, so now we're going to move on to what I paint with. And I got into um, travel palettes for a while this spring. Um, oh my goodness, I'm never getting in here. <laughs> and I love this travel palette. Um, I'm definitely going to use it more. I got a couple other travel palettes after this, and they just, <sighs> they're nice, but they're not, for me, like, I think everybody's going to have, like, their ideal travel palette, and this one's mine. So, I like that it's this small, and it all folds up, and it's got a lot of painting surfaces. I like that you can carry your water in it, and that it comes with a water cup and a sponge. <sighs> I don't like, so the colors that come in this are the Cotman line, and this is uh, Winsor Newton student grade paint. Their Cotman colors are student grade, they're not their professional, and you can tell. Um, Winsor Newton watercolors, like their professional line, are so much more pigmented than these. Um, and do I still think this was worth it? Yeah, I think it was like 20 bucks. So, like... I'm really looking forward to getting through all these paints so I can put my own in here. But yeah, even if it had been empty, I don't think it would have been a bad deal. So yeah, I really like it and it's very sturdy. I've used it several times. Oh, and it does come with this tiny brush that I don't think I've ever used. So 
The only problem you're going to run into is that if you let your cup get dirty and then you put it back on, it, it sticks. It does have a little, so like when you're painting, you can hold it on your hand like this. And I do that too, like, because when I'm painting, I'm often painting in tiny sketchbooks, which we'll get to that. Um, my go-to watercolors are in this palette and they are the Magello Mission Gold Single Pigment Set. Uh, this is what the tubes look like. And uh, I made this whole palette up before I realized I really like working with fresh paint. So I will use this up and then probably start working straight from the tube. But uh, there, um, so yeah, anyways, their, their sing single pigment set is just really beautiful. Um, and I think that they have honey in their watercolors too because they stay a little bit sticky and I feel like they re-wet super easily. I love them, love them. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of bought them on a whim and uh, I really thought that I was a Daniel Smith watercolor girl until I got these and I love these so much. I especially love single single pigment paints and the honey adds something extra. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, yep, I'm a Magello Mission Gold person now, so there you go. So let's talk about sketchbooks. Um, I have a lot of sketchbooks, um, and a lot of them are in use all the time. I usually have like five or six of them on or next to my couch. <laughs> I just, I, I love them so much. But my current big obsession is like, if I can just do a little bit of art every day, it'll make me happier. So like the days when I'm just super, super busy and I might only have like 20 minutes in the morning that I can just like relax and have any time and do some painting for fun. Like I want something small and approachable. So I've been getting all of these super tiny sketchbooks. This one's clearly not even opened yet, but I love these really tiny sketchbooks. I, oh, hey. Look, here is what all the Derwent pencils look like. Maybe I could put this in my video somewhere. Um, anyways, so I really like these small pages. I like, just like, here I spent 30 minutes on something in the morning. I, you know, I made something that I think is kind of fun, and then I just moved on with my day, right? So, yeah. That's what all of these are. I just like little ones for that. Like, low pressure, have fun, do cool things. Yeah. So, speaking of low pressure, that is why I love these jelly gouache. So, can you make beautiful art with jelly gouache? Yes, you can. But to me, the really nice thing The really nice thing about these paints is that they are not expensive. I don't have to feel guilt if I don't like what I make out of them. I can just kind of use them. I honestly just like, this palette sits next to my couch and I just kind of dip my paintbrush in there and go, oh, all right, got that color. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit less relaxed than that, but I mean, like, I really do just, like, kind of dip my paintbrush at it and hope for the best. And then also for gouache, we have my, um, beloved Weird Chef Lady Jar of my Turner Acrylic Gouache. Um, I love this stuff so much. I don't know why my camera is not... My camera does not want to focus today. Um, I, I mean, like, don't, don't tell my phone, but I'm getting a new phone. Um, and I'm hoping that, like, my filming gets slightly better just from that one thing. So here's some Turner Acrylic Gouache, and I really like it. Um, I do also have Holbein Acrylic Gouache, but I haven't had a chance to really use it yet. So, but I love this Turner stuff, and it does seem to be a little bit cheaper, and I haven't noticed a difference in the quality yet as far as I can tell. Let's talk about 
what I like to paint on and also sculpt on as I get more into sculpting. So I love wood panels um, and I love wood chunks. This is a wood chunk from that somebody in my family gave me because they know I like them. Um, and this is a wood panel that I got from Michael's, which is honking um, huge. Um, and it's really light, so that's strange. But And then I get them from Treckle. Like, I just like to see what kind of interesting things come up in their shop and get them. I like these little bitty ones. I just did a video about painting Christmas ornaments and some little ones like this. I do, I do like just regular squares and rectangles too, I swear. Um, and this I got from my friend's garage sale and it's actually slightly curved. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this yet, but it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to painting on this. Yeah, or sculpting maybe. I'll do a relief sculpture on it. That'd be kind of cool. And when I, when I paint on these weird shaped um, palettes, I feel like it's just, you have to force yourself to consider how composition works in such a different way. You know, um, this is obviously still a work in progress. Um, this is actually watercolor. I put a watercolor ground on here and I was painting it with watercolor and I don't like working on watercolor ground, so I'll probably paint over this with um, an acrylic gouache. Um, and <laughs> Uh, yeah, I occasionally fall prey to just really liking succulents too. Like, I think everybody does. I just, some people can hold it off better than others. And yeah, this is the part where I was like, I want to paint all the succulents. Yeah. This is obviously not finished, and I don't know if it will ever be finished, because this was supposed to be something fun and easy and quick, and now I'm like, this is like 40 more hours of painting to make these, like, look as nice as I'd want them to look. <laughs> Alright, we're getting down close to the end. Um, I am getting more into sculpting now. So, um, I especially like these two types of things to sculpt out of. Sorry about my hair, it gets everywhere. Um, this is Cosclay. It it looks really bad, but it's this is just what Cosclay looks like until you work with it for a little bit. Um, but the nice thing about Cosclay is that after you bake it, it's still malleable. Like, my little rat dude, his tail is made out of Cosclay. See how I can bend it without it getting broken? You cannot do that with Sculpey. Um, and this part of his tail actually has a wire in it, so I can bend it and leave it like that, and it stays. <laughs> I still think this guy is super cute, so I am so sorry about the focus issue. I don't know what's going on there. It's not usually that bad. So, and then this is my other thing that I really like, is this two-part epoxy sculpt. So this stuff you don't bake. This stuff air dries and the way it air dries it is it's harder than Sculpey and it's less brittle so I really really like it. Um, and you can do the same stuff to it that you do to Sculpey or Cosclay. Like you can um, you can sand it, you can kind of drill into it. You can carve out of it. It's, I love it. Um, actually a lot of him, <sighs> so a lot of him was actually like, his tail's made out of cosplay, but a lot of other bits of him are made out of epoxy sculpts. Um, and then little bits of UV, re UV resin are on his eyes to make them shine like that. Shiny, shine, shine. And on his mouth too. But, uh, yeah, I will be Doing a lot more sculpting in the near future, so yeah. His little toes must be made out of cosplay because I can bend them. So, anyways, there's another type of this two part resin uh, sculpting material. It's called Magic Sculpt, and I think I'm going to order some of that. So, but I really like using this, and 
looking forward to doing more experiments with it. Um, these are my two favorite sculpting tools. These are my two favorite sculpting tools. It's this one with a little kind of cloven hoof thing, like a little triangle, and then like this pointy one. It's just, I like, I really like find myself reaching for these two. And I think everybody has their own like methodology when it comes to sculpting. So everybody's going to have their own favorite tools, but yeah, that's it. Guys, I think we hit like a little bit of everything that I'm working on right now. So yeah, if you have questions about anything or if I forget to put a link to something that you're curious about, let me, oh, look at how much that changes that. Yeah. Anyways, so if I forget a link in the description, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I hope you guys have a good holiday if you are celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, I have uh, my first big art festival this weekend, so wish me luck with that. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm really looking forward to, like, after that, I can start doing other things besides getting ready for an art festival. <laughs> So have a really great weekend, guys, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Are you just going to sleep there? I have to get stuff done. Are you my favorite art helper cat? Yeah? Thank you. Are you a good help? Yeah, you are. You're right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you.